are heroes, working together, trying to help the world to fight against waves after waves of demons. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from Maple University on the Dice Tower, teaching you in our How to Play video series. In this video, we have Planet Apocalypse, game designed by Sandy Peterson and published by Peterson Games. Let's do this, Tarrant. In Planet Apocalypse, the end is nigh. The Hellgate is open, and the demons, under the control of a powerful lord, are coming. The players will cooperatively play the role of heroes, who will need to defeat ever-increasing waves of demons in order to build up their power and ready themselves to face the Lord in the final battle. If the players can defeat the Lord before the Lord casts his shadow over the entire land, or before the Doom Track reaches 13, then the players will win the game. In this video, we will primarily be teaching using the Invasion map, which is the most basic map that comes with the base game. Some of the rules we explain may feel a little bit superfluous on this particular map, but applying them strictly is important on future maps. I'm not going to step you through the full setup for this game, but I'm going to show you some of the components up front to help us with the explanation going forward. You'll set up the map according to the scenario that you're playing. At least one area would be labelled Start, and this is where your character minis go. And at least one area will be labelled Lord's Area, which is where the Lord mini begins. The Lord's Area will also contain a Lord's Shadow token, which I'll talk about later. You'll keep the Lord's Information Sheet nearby, with starting health depending on the number of players. You can choose from among all of the Lords and Ladies in all of the expansions and add-on packs you've purchased. There is no specific Lord for a given map. The Lord's relative difficulties are reflected by the crowns on the back. Each player will have a player board showing their hero. On the top is your health gauge, with your maximum health and current health. On the left are places for your toughness and your attack dice. This shows you your starting figures and you'll take them in tokens, because they can change through the game. At the bottom of the board are places to store your luck, for which you start with some, and your courage, which you will gain through the game. In green and red are your starting ability and weakness, and in white are two abilities that you must unlock before you can use them. Finally, the six spaces on the right represent your upgrade tree. Once again, you don't have any of these abilities or bonuses yet, but you'll be able to unlock them by buying gifts through the game. Keep the Minions board and all of the Minions minis nearby. These will be the basic enemies that you fight through the game. The Control board keeps track of some of the communal information in the game. It contains the Despair track and the Lord track, which advance and make certain things trigger during the game. It shows the Doom track, which will advance as bad things happen. It has the Communal Courage pool, which contains courage which can be spent by any player. It contains the Despair Dice, which will tell you which demons spawn through the game. And one Legion card, drawn at random from all of the Legion cards you have available. Take special note of what's written on the Legion card. This is a passive effect which is shared by all demons while that card is in play. Finally, you'll have several stacks of matching Trooper cards. These are members of the general public whom you can recruit onto your journey. And so, with that quick introduction into the components, now let's have a look at how the game plays. Each round of Planet Apocalypse is played in three phases. The Team Phase, the Hero Phase, and the Enemy Phase. In the Team Phase, the players will resolve Team Actions. Many of these are somewhat individual in nature, and most of them involve upgrading or improving characters. But the important thing is that they're all resolved in this phase before anything else. Then comes the hero phase, and this is the phase in which the heroes will be taking actions out on the map. For the most part, this will be moving and attacking the demons. Then comes the enemy phase, in which the enemies fight back. The despair and lord tracks will advance, and the enemies will move and attack the players. If the enemies ever advance off the main board, 
or kill any of the players, then the team will gain Doom. Fundamentally, your aims moving through this game are fairly simple. You need to kill enemies, which prevents Doom and earns you courage. You then spend that courage to upgrade and equip your character. And you continue doing that until you're strong enough to face and defeat the Lord. Meanwhile, try to avoid dying and try not to let too many enemies break through. When the time does come to face the Lord in final battle, this will occur off the main map and on the Hell board in a special set of rules known as Hell Time. This differs from the normal turn sequence, but we'll come back to that later in the video. The first phase of each round is the team phase, and the first step of this phase is to rotate the captain marker one player clockwise. The captain is first in turn order for the round, and is the final arbiter of any common decisions, such as the use of the common courage pool. After this, you'll move to the team actions. There are four basic team actions in the game. Earn a gift, renew, first aid, and recruit troopers. These actions can be done by any players and in any order. So now let's look at each action in detail. The first team action is to earn a gift, and this is the major hero upgrading action in the game. Each hero may do this action as many times as they wish during one team phase, as long as they can afford the gifts. To start the game, there will be 10 random gifts on the gifts board, dealt from the gifts deck. To take the action, a player first chooses one of the available gifts. It cannot have the same name as a gift that that hero already has. Then, choose an empty slot in the upgrade section of your player board. This must be a slot labelled Start, or one connected to an existing gift by an arrow. Next, pay the cost in Courage shown on the slot, plus, if applicable, any cost shown on the gift. In this case here, the cost would be 7 Courage. Then, gain the once-off benefit printed on the slot. Often, this will be to gain new tokens, or increase your attack pool or toughness. Alternatively, it may allow you to acquire one of your special abilities, in which case you mark that that ability is now available with the checkmark token. Finally, place the card on the slot, and if there's an immediate effect on the card, resolve that too. Other gifts may give you ongoing new actions or passive abilities. Gifts may neither be moved nor discarded once they've been placed on your player board, and the empty slot on the gifts board is not immediately replenished. The refresh mechanic for this board is triggered in a different way, which we'll cover later. A quick note about paying courage, whether it be for gifts or for any other action that requires courage. You may pay courage from three places. From your personal courage pool, from the common courage pool on the control board, if multiple players want to spend this courage, the captain has final say, or the player may spend luck from their personal pool as if it were courage. What players are not allowed to do is spend courage or luck from a teammate's pool. These personal tokens are never shared, and it's important that the team plays to try to get them with the players who would benefit from them the most. The other thing I'll point out here is that a gift showing this icon in the top right corner is activated by spending personal luck. This is the only other function for luck in the game other than spending it as courage. And so if you have no gifts of this type, or never plan to have any, then you should spend your luck as courage. The second team action is Renew, which is one of the ways in the game that players can gain more luck. This is a true collaborative action among the players. Collectively, the players must spend a total of 9 courage from their personal or common pools. Then the team gains 4 luck, which must be immediately distributed among the heroes. Other than some specific gifts or upgrade slots, this is usually the only way to gain more luck during the game. The third team action is First Aid, and this may be administered by each hero once per team phase. 
taking the first aid action is free or costs one courage if there are any enemies in the same area as the hero. There are two options when taking this action. Either treat yourself and heal one health, or treat a teammate located in the same area and heal that hero's health by one. Although no hero may administer first aid more than once in a team phase, a hero may benefit from it multiple times. A hero's health cannot go above the current health cap. The final basic team action is to recruit troopers, which are these members of the public who are available to help your quest. This action may only be completed once per team phase per hero, and only by heroes who start the team phase in the start area. You can think of this as the hero recruiting from this city. A player taking this action first rolls a d4. To the number that was rolled, in this case a 3, the player may spend any amount of courage to increase the number. So a 3 plus 3 courage spent would be a recruiting value of 6. This amount is then spent on recruiting troopers from these piles based on the cost shown in the circle number here. The 6, for example, could recruit 3 citizen militia or 2 police. All recruited troopers are then placed next to that player's player board. These troopers are said to be on patrol with that hero. A hero may not have more than four troopers on patrol at any given time, and all of a hero's troopers must be the same type. If the hero wishes to recruit a different type of trooper, then any existing troopers of a different type can be discarded. The supply of trooper cards is limited, and once a certain type is gone, that type can't be recruited again until some have been returned to the supply. In addition to the four basic team actions, if you've obtained a gift or other effect which states that it is a team action, this must also be resolved in this phase. All actions in the team phase can be discussed cooperatively ahead of doing them, and may be resolved in any order within this phase. The second phase of each round is the hero phase. In this phase, each hero will take one turn, starting from the captain and going clockwise. On their turn, the hero may take each of the game's three hero actions, once each, in any order. These actions are move, attack, or set an ambush. Some heroes may also have gifts or abilities which unlock another action option. First, I'll talk about setting an ambush. To do this, the player takes one or more patrol cards from their player board and then places them onto the main board in their hero's current area and on top of any who are already there. This group of troopers now forms an ambush party. An ambush party has the same restrictions as a player's patrol troopers. There may be no more than four troopers in the ambush party and there may be no more than one type of trooper in the party. If the heroes wish to set up a different type of ambush party in this area, they must first discard the ones that are already there. This is the end of the set ambush action. The ambush itself will occur at a later stage. The next action is to move, and when a hero moves, they may move one or two areas. When moving two areas, the hero cannot double back and return to the same place they started, and cannot take an action between the first and second moves. Whenever a hero enters an area with an invasion token, this token must be resolved. This is what reveals new enemies onto the board. To carry this out, first remove the token. Next, roll all the dice currently in the despair pool. This will begin the game at 4, but will increase as the game goes on. Using the results of the roll, make as many matching pairs of symbols as you can. For each matching first circle symbol, add a first circle demon, the Grillus, onto the board. For each matching second circle symbol, add a fiend, your second circle demon. And for third circle symbols, add a third circle demon, the Kaka demon. Additionally, for each matching pair, regardless of the symbol, add one lava minion onto the map. These are your weakest but most numerous minions. 
Add these to the area where the invasion token came from. The minion minis are limited, and if you don't have enough to resolve your full invasion roll, then you gain one doom, irrespective of how many minis you fail to place. Note that there is one other sort of demon in the game, the fourth circle demons. These are not resolved from invasion tokens, and we'll talk about them a little bit later in the video. It won't happen in your first map, but in later maps you may come across multiple invasion tokens at once. When this happens, you'll resolve each of them separately with a different roll of the despair dice, and you may gain one doom for each invasion token if you have insufficient minis. If you resolved an invasion with your first move, you may still continue with a second move, possibly resolving another. If you ever move into an area which contains either a Lord or a Lord's Shadow Marker, then you end your move immediately and trigger Hell Time. We'll talk more about Hell Time later in the video. The final hero phase action is to attack, and here the hero attacks all of the minions in their current area. To do this, first take the attack dice matching all of the current tokens in your attack pool. This is your base attack. Some gifts allow you to temporarily add additional dice. For example, this one allows you to spend up to three health to gain a D8 for each health spent. Troopers in your patrol do not impact the dice you roll in attack. Finally, before rolling the dice, each hero in the same area as you may spend one courage in order to help you. When doing this, one of your dice is upgraded to the next size up, up to a maximum of d12, for this roll only. You are not allowed to spend courage to help yourself. If there happens to be an ambush party in the area, they do not participate in this attack. Now roll your final pool of attack dice. Then allocate the dice you've rolled to the minions in your area however you wish. To kill an enemy, you must exceed its toughness value on a single die. So with this die roll here, the 7 could be allocated to the fiend, exceeding the 6 to kill it. The two fives can be allocated to the grillus, each of them exceeding the 3 to kill those. And while the 4 on the d4 exceeds this lava's toughness to kill one of them, the number 1 is not sufficient to kill the last remaining lava. You are never allowed to add dice together to try to exceed the toughness value of a demon. The hit must be made on a single die. When facing a demon that has two toughness values, that value must be exceeded on two separate dice in order to land a hit. So here, this die roll, with only one value exceeding four, is not sufficient to land a hit on this third circle caca demon. Larvae and 1st, 2nd and 3rd circle demons all have only one health, so when you successfully land a hit, remove them from the board. Then the hero who launched the attack gains one courage for each minion killed. This must go into that hero's personal pool, it cannot be shared among the heroes. 4th circle demons start with 4 health, and so when you land a hit, reduce the health by 1. Only when its health is reduced to zero is that fourth circle demon killed. And the hero who landed the killing blow gains four courage as reward. Note that while the game comes with only six copies of each type of die, there is no limit to the number of dice you can roll in a battle. After the captain has taken, or chosen to pass, on each of the three hero actions, as well as any extra ones available on the player board, play passes to the next player clockwise. This continues until all players have had a turn in the hero phase. The game then proceeds to the enemy phase. The enemy phase is broken into four steps. The despair and lord cycles, the minions attack, the minions move and spawn, and the ambush phase. First is the despair track where you advance the despair marker one step for each player in the game. If the despair marker reaches or crosses the one space, then resolve the despair cycle. First add one new die to the despair pool, up to a maximum of 12. 
then add four courage to the common courage pool and then advance the Lord track one step. Once the Lord track has finished a cycle and returns to the one step, then resolve the Lord cycle. Sweep out any gifts remaining on the gift board and then deal 10 new gifts. Next, advance the Lord Mini one step in the direction of the arrows on the board and place a Lord's Shadow token into its new area. The Lord's Shadow represents all of the areas on the board which are under the influence of the Lord and in this starting scenario, it's simply going to be all the places the Lord has been. The areas under the shadow will still behave as separate areas for most purposes but if a hero is ever inside the Lord's shadow, it will have to fight against all of the enemies present across all areas of the shadow. In this scenario, amalgamate all enemies and invasion tokens into the Lord's current area. If there are any ambush parties on the board in the Lord's new area or anywhere under the shadow, they are immediately killed. Note that this does not apply to any on patrol with your heroes. Now choose a random fourth circle minion from all of the minions you have available with your packs of the game. Set it into the Lord's area and set up its information card off to the side. This is generally the only way that fourth circle demons enter the game. Finally, if the Lord's shadow or the Lord has advanced into an area containing a hero, then you will proceed to a Lord battle in hell time. And once again, we'll come back to that later in the video. The next step is the minions attack step. And this is resolved for each area on the board where there is at least one minion and at least one hero. In areas with just minions and ambush parties, the attack step is not resolved. You can resolve the areas in whichever order you wish, but within an area, you must follow a set sequence. First, group all of the minions into smaller groups of matching type, and then resolve each group's attack, starting with the larvae, or the level zeros, then the level ones, the level twos, threes, and so on. Then, gather the group's attack dice. Each larva, for example, has an attack of 1d6, and so the group of three larvae we saw before would attack with 3d6. Then choose a single hero from among those in the area of the attack to be the target for this group's attack. This must be done before you roll the dice, but can be a different hero for each attack within the same area. Then resolve the attack the same way you would an attack against a minion. Roll the dice and then suffer one hit for each die which exceeds that hero's toughness. In this case, all three of these dice exceed two, and so Hannah Hazard would lose three health. Alternatively, heroes can use troopers to absorb some of the hits, and this can be troopers in that player's patrol, or in an ambush party within that area. The number at the very top left of the trooper card shows the number of hits that it can absorb, but any trooper that absorbs at least one hit in the battle will be killed and returned to the supply. So here, these two army men could absorb the entire four incoming damage, or one army and one police could absorb the four hits, killing both, or you could choose to absorb three hits on the policeman and then one health. All permutations are allowable. After resolving the lowest minion group's attack in full, proceed to the next minion group and so on until all have attacked. After all minion attacks are resolved, proceed to the minion's move and spawn phase. First, resolve the start area and any minions in this area advance upon civilization. On most maps, they will leave the board and you will gain one doom for each minion. Mark this out on the doom track. If you're unfortunate enough to allow a fourth circle demon to exit in this way, then you will gain four doom, irrespective of how much of its health you sapped. Worst of all, if you ever allow an invasion token to leave the board without being revealed, then you will gain one doom for each die currently in the despair pool. A very good way to lose quickly. It's impossible for this to happen in the basic invasion scenario, but in some of the other maps, it's something you need to watch for. 
then advance all minions and invasion tokens one step along the track in the direction of the arrows, like so. If an invasion token enters an area with either a hero or an ambush party, then resolve it in the usual way. Finally, spawn a new invasion token in the Lord's current location. The final step is to resolve ambushes, and this occurs in any area containing an ambush party and at least one minion. The ambush party resolves a single attack against the minions in that area, rolling dice based on what's shown at the bottom of the cards. So here a team of two army rolls a total of 1d6, and a team of four volunteers rolls a total of 1d10. Unlike a hero phase attack, players cannot spend courage to help the attack. Any minions killed or hurt in the ambush are resolved in the usual way, and the courage reward which will be earned by the ambush party is added to the player's common courage pool. After all ambushes are complete, proceed to the next round with the team phase. In Planet Apocalypse, the final battle, or the preliminary battles, against the Lord does not occur on the main map. The heroes and the Lord are transported to Hell and undergo Hell Time in order to resolve their battle. A Lord battle and Hell Time are triggered in one of two ways. Either when a hero enters the Lord's shadow, or when the Lord advances into a hero's location. Either way, all heroes, minions, invasion tokens, and the Lord are removed from the shadow, with the gate token placed on the board to remind you where they came from, and are moved onto the Hell Time board. If the hero activated Hell Time by entering the shadow, place that hero on the activated hero space, otherwise set it up at the base of Hell. Next, any other heroes may be called from anywhere on the map to join this battle in Hell. Anyone who joins adds their minis onto the base of Hell. If there's an invasion token in Hell, then resolve it in the usual way with Despair Dice. Finally, to finish the setup of Hell Time, resolve the Lord's Menace effect. This could be an extra attack, something which weakens the heroes, and so on. The rest of Hell Time resolves in a very simple way. Each of the heroes will get the chance to attack or retreat, and then the enemies will attack. You'll repeat these two steps until either the Lord is dead, or all of the players are out of the battle. The hero attack phase is resolved in turn order, starting from the current captain. On a hell time turn, the hero has two options, either to attack or retreat. Attack is resolved exactly as it would be on the main map. The hero gains the dice from the pool. Other heroes currently in the hell time can spend courage to help. And hits are resolved among the minions or the lord as the players see fit. To retreat, the player removes that hero's mini from hell time and may move to any location which is outside the lord's shadow, even one that is different to where they started. The enemy attack phase is then resolved exactly as it would be during a normal minions attack phase, starting with the level 0 group and working up to the 4th circle demons before finally the Lord makes his attack. Continue this sequence until all heroes have either retreated or died, or until the Lord has been vanquished. Hell time sits outside the main sequence of the game. There is no team phase, so you cannot take team actions. No gaining gifts, no doing first aid, no doing any actions which state as a team action. The only allowable actions on a hell time turn are attack or retreat, so any other player effects which are hero phase actions are also not allowable. However, any gifts or abilities which bolster a player's attack can be used in hell time, as well as any abilities which specifically refer to Helltime. Additionally, the elements of the enemy phase, such as advancing of the despair cycle or minions moving, also do not occur while you're in Helltime. Although any ambush parties on the board are killed when the Lord's Shadow advances on them, you can still hold a patrol and take that patrol into Helltime, 
using them to absorb hits. And you should also note that the Lord's Sheet covers a series of special rules that apply to fighting that Lord, and that all Lords have a way of earning courage while you're doing damage to that Lord. When Hell Time is over, remove the Lord and any remaining minions from the Hellboard, and return them to the location of the Gate token. Then return to the main sequence of the game. If Helltime was activated by a hero entering the Lord's Shadow, then play passes immediately to the next player. Or to the enemy phase if it was the last player's turn. If it was triggered by the Lord advancing on a hero, then proceed to the minion's attack phase. The heroes may re-enter Hell again later in the game to take another attempt at killing the Lord. That entire sequence will resolve again, including the Lord's Menace effect, but the Lord will not regain any health that was taken in the first battle. The players win the game when they successfully kill the Lord. The players lose if the Doom track ever reaches 13, or if the Lord or his shadow ever advances to a start area. Now that we've covered all the basic rules in Planet Apocalypse, we'll talk about some of the other things you need to know to play this game. First, we'll talk about death. Death is not the end in this game, but it's certainly not a good thing. When a hero dies, all of its troopers, gifts, courage, and so on are discarded, and the team gains two doom. Then at the start of the next team phase, after choosing the new captain, but before doing team actions, bring a new character into the game, setting up exactly as you would at the start of the game. However, instead of starting with no courage, give this new hero courage equal to the current number of despair dice in the pool. This will help the new hero buy a few gifts quickly to get at least part way back to the strength of the character who was lost. Some attacks or effects in the game will result in the players getting persistent negative effect tokens. A stun token means that that hero must give up either its move action or its attack action in the next hero phase. The fire token means that that hero is on fire. While that hero is on fire, they will lose one health at the start of each hero phase turn. The fire can be put out either by that hero or another hero in the same area, giving up their attack action to put out the fire. A hero may have only one of each of these tokens at a time. The other effect is Pestilence, and a hero with one or more Pestilence will lose one health per Pestilence each time the Despair track reaches or passes one. A Pestilence token can be removed with any healing action, foregoing the normal improvement in health. These tokens are often gained when a hero is damaged by a certain enemy. In these cases, if all of the hits from an incoming attack are absorbed by troopers, then the hero will not get the negative effect. Note that all three of these negative effects occur within the normal turn sequence, and so, while players can gain these in hell time, they do not resolve their effects until you're back in normal time. One very important element of the game is the Legion card. There will be one in effect at all times, and usually it will have an effect which applies to all demons in the game. Demons are all enemies except for the Larvae and the Lord. At the start of the game, you choose a Legion at random from all of the Legions you have available. And during the game, when the Doom marker reaches three, or when it reaches 7, you discard the active legion card and draw a new one at random. This means part of the strategy of your game will change rapidly and significantly as you hit these doom milestones. There are a few limitations on your player statistics. You can never have more than 5 toughness, nor less than 0, a die can never be larger than a d12, and neither your health cap nor health can exceed 10. Some of the game's troopers have some additional text effects which give you different options when using them. The expansion packs will give you some additional options for troopers and some specific regions, which give you a sequence of troopers to use for the game. 
Some of the later maps in the game have more than one lord on them. And in these cases, there's always one main lord and one or more lesser lords. Lesser lords start with a third of the health of a regular lord. However, they still have their own shadow and they still need to be defeated in hell time like a main lord. In a scenario with lesser lords, all lesser lords as well as the main lord need to be killed to win the game. Some maps have loops or even wraparound adjacency, and this is where some of the intricacies relating to the Lord's Shadow and how enemies depart from the designated start spaces is important. All of the expansion maps have special rules, which we won't cover in detail in this video, although we will give you a quick overview of all the expansion maps at the end. If you're finding the game either too easy or too difficult, there are many ways of adjusting the difficulty. To make the game easier, there is the Divine Intervention token, which belongs to the Captain. This is recommended for your first game of Planet Apocalypse, and for your second attempt at any map that you've failed. This token may be spent once per game to do one of the following four things. Ignore the most recent result of the Despair dice, and reset all the faces to the most favourable choice. Discard the current Legion card, and replace it at random. To discard a fourth circle demon that was just drawn in the Lord phase, and replace that with another one at random. Or to sweep out the ten gift cards that have just been drawn, and replace them with a new ten. What it can't save you from is a particularly bad die roll in battle. For a hard game, don't pick your Lord until you first enter Hell Time. That way you've got no way to prepare or start the game with an extra despair die. For a nightmarish game, add a level 4 demon from the very start, or advance the Lord one step towards the players. Or give the Lord health as if there's one more player in the game, or start with two extra despair dice. For a truly hellish game, start with three extra despair dice, or combine some of the nightmare modifiers together. The world of Planet Apocalypse is as large as you want to make it. What we've shown you here came primarily from the base game box, but this game comes with four full-size expansions, giving you new maps, new lords and new demons, and another seven add-on packs with further lords and ladies to enhance your experience. The Void Pack takes the game into outer space, with the launch site map, in which demons will march around one central lord, and the moon base, with one conventional arm and one slower moving but double invading arm. The dragon pack will take you onto the back of a giant dragon, where you'll face your first lesser lord, with minions attacking you from both directions, and deep into the bowels of the dragon, where you will need to keep it clear of minions to avoid gaining too much doom. The Pack of the Pit takes players to Washington DC, where one Lord in the center will attack down three paths, and to the Vatican, where three Lords will attack the players in the center. In the Invasion of Purgatory, the players face a total of four Lords as they descend into Hell, and to end the campaign in the final battle in the center of Hell, players move around a series of swirling paths to face the final Lord at the end. Each major expansion adds two new lords, three new fourth circle demons, two new characters, and a series of gifts, regions, and troopers, which can be fully melded with any map in the game. And that's how to play Planet Apocalypse. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please put them in the comment section below. See you in our next video.